Welcome to the October 2022 episode of Let's Talk Tech. We just finished our first year on Village TV and on YouTube, and it has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate Paul Ortiz of Village Television giving me this opportunity to help educate our community on a variety of technology topics and look forward to providing more help to the community. I'd also like to thank Cole Young for his time and attention as my producer director. He is a great asset to our community and very appreciated. Plus a big shout out to Mark Weiss, who is always a help with setup and helping with the teleprompter. I could not do this show without a teleprompter. Today's episode begins with online shopping hazards, and then we go back to the basics of technology to help those who are new viewers or thinking about how to add some new or more tech to their world, and of course, warnings about a few new scams. Hi, Cheryl, welcome back. We had a well-deserved rest last month for their anniversary episode. Oh, we certainly did. <laughs> it was great, yeah. and um, the segments were good. We, we talked about one of your favorites, cookies, because. Yes. I know you love cookies. I do love cookies. <laughs> um, and it was, seems like we were just talking about fall and pumpkin spice, and here we are again. Oh, I can't believe it. It's all, another year here. Another year. So Season two. Season two. <laughs> that's right. This is the head of season two. Great to bring that up. So I heard you had a bad online shopping experience, and I thought we would share that with our audience. Anything to embarrass me. <laughs> all right. I recently bought two dresses online for my son's wedding festivities. Um, but when I received them, they weren't what I expected. They absolutely looked terrible on me. But I hadn't purchased them through Amazon, so I had to pay for shipping. The shipping was about 15 bucks, and I thought, OK, it was, the shipping price was a little high, but I got a good deal on the dresses. But when I got them, oh my god, they were ghastly. They were ghastly on the hanger, and they were unbelievably awful on me. They didn't look anything like the pictures online. So when I tried to return them, that's when I found out they came from China. The return information on the website was really confusing, really difficult, and I finally had to work my, through, my way through like a ton of screens. When I finally got it, um, they said that they would only refund me 15% if I kept the dress. If I wanted to return them, then I had to pay the, um, the shipping costs and customs. Oh, um, terrible. So when I tried to find out, when I brought them back to the post office to see what they would cost, shipping was going to be $30. Well, it just wasn't worth it. So we're online. It didn't say anything on online that it came from China. So I guess buyer beware when the shipping costs are that much money. $15 is a lot for two dresses. When it's that much money, then you got to stop and think, where did they come from? And I just need to tell you, I did look at the reviews, mm -hmm. and every review was perfect. The dresses were excellent. Right. Come to find out, you can't really write a review. They don't mm -hmm. let you. So. So now you can't write your review to say right. how bad it was. Right, right. Yeah, right, that's right. really unfortunate. Right. And and it and it's become a big business online. And I'm going to talk to the audience here now about it a little bit. But what a terrible thing. And we've shown some pictures so oh. the audience has an idea <laughs> of, of what they look. They looked lovely on the pictures <laughs> and then not so lovely on Cheryl. Anything so. to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK. Well, let me, um, let me share some things with our audience okay. then. So several times I've seen really cute clothes online. But after researching, I've decided against the purchase. Buying online can be very problematic. It's often difficult to determine whether or not the company is real and reputable. Scammers often set up website and put videos on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram with the ex purpose of scamming you. Or they are simply a front for cheaply made goods from overseas. The quality of the merchandise is often horrid, just like your experience, and nothing like the picture shown. So much to consider before clicking on the buy button, which has become so easy to use. There can be many pitfalls to buying from these unproven sites, such as identity theft. This usually involves cyber criminals hacking into the e-commerce website and stealing users' login or credit card details. They also set up fake stores using fake reviews or using fake apps, putting your data at risk. Even if the store is real, like in Cheryl's scenario, the delays in delivery, the ability to assess the quality, and the hassles and costs of returning something should make you think twice. 
convenience, good prices, privacy, and not having to leave home aren't the pros of buying online. But consider a reputable online store or do a lot of homework ahead of time and test the water by purchasing something inexpensive. Resist buy me words and offers of discounts and free shipping to entice you. Buying any merchandise online without researching the online store thoroughly should be avoided and it's the safest. So Cheryl, I'm really sorry you had this experience, but thank you for sharing it with us. And thanks for coming today. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Debbie. You're Take welcome. Care. You too. And up next, a little Tech 101, truly the basics. Life, a series of moments. A touch, a look, a laugh, successful people. It might not be superior imagination, it just might be superior retirement planning. Imagine what's next. Plan today, own tomorrow. On the show, we talk about a lot of different technology, but I wanted to take this segment back to the very basics. Seniors in a digital world can undoubtedly be overwhelmed by all the new technology around us. We are surrounded by a selection of digital devices from smartphones to tablets to laptops or even ATM machines. There's no escaping it. So I believe it's best if you learn how to use all these technological advances to make your life easier. Many seniors were pushed into using tech during the pandemic, and it's really easy to become tech-savvy seniors when you begin to learn more about the technology around you and how best to use all of these devices. Everything can be learned, and only if you put your mind to it. Technology is used in every facet of life because it can provide the speed, connectivity, and efficiency to make tasks easier. We all want things to be easier and faster, and as an older adult, it's important not to underestimate how technology can really help us in our golden years. In our community, we have over 12,700 manners, but the number of manners with internet is just over 10,000. There could be a few that buy from another source, but that's very difficult and costly if you can even find it. Let's assume then that there's about a thousand or so manners that are not connected to the World Wide Web and likely don't use computers either, although some may have a smartphone as their main source of technology. It's true that most of your lives were lived without modern gadgets of today, and you did just fine. But that doesn't mean you can't use technology. The definition of a computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data, and can store, retrieve, and process data. A computer comes in three basic forms, but we include smartphones as a fourth type of a computer because their personal computing capabilities are the same. Let's start with the desktop computer. This has been around now for going on five decades. A desktop computer usually comes with the separate components that make up the desktop as a whole. It contains a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, and the computer box itself, often known as a tower. Many newer versions of desktop computers, known as all-in-ones, combine the monitor and a computer tower into a single unit with a separate keyboard. They rely on the main power connection with the power cable. Sometimes they look like a large TV. These use operating systems to run the programs. The two most popular are Windows for PCs and iOS for Mac users. Then we have the laptop. That's the little smaller portable version of a desktop. Compact computers, now known as HP, really pioneered the portable computer back in the 80s. I actually had one and it was like a small suitcase, like a little sewing machine you could carry around. A laptop computer, also known as a notebook, is a single box that opens up like a clamshell with the monitor on top and the keyboard and mouse built in. Laptops are convenient because they're portable and in addition to a power cable, they also use battery power which can last for several hours. Of course, laptop screens are smaller but you can usually get one up to about 17 inches diagonally. Tablets are another very popular device. I've used an iPad now for about 12 years, not the same one of course, but a tablet computer is a lightweight, 
wireless and portable personal computer with a touchscreen flat surface. The tablet is usually smaller than a notebook computer, but larger than a smartphone. Tablets can also serve as a camera with a front and rear camera for photography and video capabilities. They also have a battery that can last several hours, but have a cable for charging directly into a power source too. Examples of tablets are iPads, Amazon Fire tablets, Samsung Galaxy tablets, and even a Kindle, which is like an electronic book. Apple's iPads definitely dominate the market due to their ease of use and the ability to sync with a Mac computer and, of course, an iPhone. It's likely that a smartphone is the most widely used piece of technology by seniors today. A smartphone is a cellular phone device with the capabilities of a personal computer. Similar to a tablet, they use a touchscreen surface and have cameras for photography and video recording. For most people, smartphones are used as portable personal computers since they're able to connect to the internet, run multiple applications, and allow you to do most of the things that you could do on a personal computer. Today's phones are incredibly smart too. In fact, according to a Stephen Johnson from Aging 2.0, Today's product developers assume that you own a smartphone. From apps for transportation like Uber to an electronic dog collar to keep track of your furry friend, your phone will make all that possible. So here's just a quick list of some of the most useful things you can do with any one of these pieces of technology. You can browse the internet. That's the number one. In the August and September issue of The Village Breeze, there's actually an article with lots of great websites for seniors. Of course, using email. Next month, I'm actually gonna talk about all the various email options out there. Manage your finance, play games, download and watch movies, stream content such as TV shows, news, and more. Listen to music or audiobooks. Stay in touch with your friends and family via social media or Facebook, voice calls, video chats, or software like Skype, Google Meet, WhatsApp, and Zoom. Sharing your photo albums, edit your own video and photos, and of course, shopping online carefully. Although convenient, these can be a time drain. According to a recent AARP study, the average American spends over eight hours a day which is just double the average of 10 years ago. So really this means you likely don't need all of those devices, but should think about choosing the ones which benefit you the most. If you are considering the purchase of a tablet, consider the screen size based on whether you plan to watch video or movies or just use it as an e-reader. iPads range from 7.9 to 12.9 inches diagonally. My husband, who was never into tech at all, now uses the larger iPad for everything he wants or needs along with his iPhone. If you are considering buying a computer, you might want to make sure it has a touchscreen, a backlit keyboard, Wi-Fi, and a built-in webcam to get the most use. And most do have those already. Actually, Chromebooks are a great device for most seniors and much less expensive. They are a cross between a laptop and a tablet. If you're considering buying a new smartphone, iPhones make up more than half the market, but Android phones are as good or better depending on your plan that you use. Companies often pressure you to upgrade every three years or so, but the real reasons to upgrade should be if your current phone can't handle the latest update or if your battery doesn't hold a charge. Many phones are now six inches or more in on their screen, and reasons not to upgrade are to get a better camera or to get a different cell plan. And we could talk about that on a whole entire show. Of course, I've mentioned this several times over the past year, but smart TVs are essential now. For an older audience, they allow you to cut the cord and potentially save money by subscribing and watching only the shows that matter to you. If you have an older TV that offers a USB connection port, you can buy a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick for around $25 and make your TV smart. One thing to also consider is they often offer voice-controlled remotes, which is a great feature for the senior audience. Watching Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, and more is now as simply as a quick click, but as their popularity rises, the cost for them also is increasing. Hulu just increased their price again, and that's just twice this year alone. If you're using a desktop or a laptop, consider investing in an external hard drive to back up all of your information, 
or buy cloud storage from iCloud, Amazon, or Google, and you'll need an internet connection for that. Backing up your most important information and pictures should be a priority and done regularly. Nothing is worse than losing a treasured photo. And when we return, I'll discuss how to get training for all of your devices and answer some common questions. How do you comfort a family who's experienced a loss? At O'Connor Mortuary, we start by welcoming them into our space, where families of all faiths and cultures belong. We allow them the time to process their grief, providing guidance when it's needed and listening intently when it's not. We gather the values, the stories, the relationships, and the dreams together and use them to shape the memory of their loved one into a beautiful experience they'll cherish forever. When your family is in need of true comfort, call O'Connor Mortuary. So before we talk about all the training, I want to go over some co a common question. How do I install the updates on my phone? Well, the easiest method is to set your device to have the operating system and apps update automatically. On an iPhone, you go to Settings, then General, and Software Update for the operating system. Then you can also go to the Settings and then the App Store to turn on automatic updates for all of your apps. For Android phones, go to Settings, then About Phone, Tablet, turn on automatic updates. Big updates to phones operating systems often arrive in the fall when the phone manufacturers and Apple developers unveil their latest models. That is when you'll find new free features debuting for all new smartphones that will work on some older model phones too, but usually five years old and younger. But incremental updates to all your smartphone and tablet software happen all year long. Those updates are really important to install on your device to repair mistakes that developers make when they create the code, fix flaws that attackers have found, and increase your efficiency. If you see an update pending on the software update screen, it was perhaps you hadn't had the phone charged or plugged in or not connected to your Wi-Fi. And if that's the case, you can simply tap Install Now to allow it to happen manually, even if you're not hooked up now to Wi-Fi or power. Recently, Apple had a critical security update, and even it mentioned it on the nightly news because it was that important. If you didn't have your updates to automatic updates enabled, you would have missed that very important update. Be aware that updates while using cell phone service, especially if you don't have a smartphone that runs on 5G network, can take longer with Wi-Fi and eat up your data share plan. And that's troublesome if you have a data plan that caps. Long updates can also drain, drain your battery. Another common question is, how do I turn my phone into a hotspot? A hotspot is a way to use your phone's cellular signal to connect other devices to the internet. A few things to keep in mind. The hotspot feature can eat up your phone's battery life. Using the hotspot feature, you can also share your phone's data with up to 10 devices. The data used with a hotspot connection depends on your internet activity. When connected to a hotspot network, limit your internet activities, though, to small tasks like sending an email. Watching a movie on a hotspot network could rapidly be costly. This can be also a short-term solution to staying connected if your home internet goes down, too. On an Android device, you can open the Settings app, tap Network and Internet, Select Hotspot and Tethering. Tap on a Wi-Fi hotspot. Make a note of the password or change it if needed. Turn on the switch besides use Wi-Fi hotspot. On an iPhone or Apple device, go to the Settings app. Go into Personal Hotspot. Make a note of the password or change it if needed. Turn on the switch besides allow others to join. And that's all there is to it. So let's talk about training options. And obtain, because obtaining digital literacy can give older adults the skills and confidence to access information and services online and make you more comfortable and confident. In the current information age where questions can be answered in an instant, we are able to take advantage of being informed and connected by gaining the know-how necessary to help ourselves and improve our lives. 
The ability to comfortably use your devices makes all the difference. And even some simple training in using computers, tablets, and smartphones can really help seniors stay connected with their family, friends, and their communities. This is especially important for seniors who wish to live independently and age at home. If you want to learn the basics or just brush up on your digital literacy, we can give you some pointers here on how to become a tech-savvy senior in no time. Here in Laguna Woods Village, we have the PC Club, the Mac Workshop, the Camera Club, the Video Club, who all offer regular classes and help on these devices. Saddleback Emeritus offers classes, AARP offers a variety of tools, and there are many websites with free tutorials on all type of technology tools. SeniorPlanet.org, which is up on our screen, is one. And despite the older look and feel of that website, it still offers some good basic training options. The Seniors Guide to Computers, also a great one, and even the Goodwill has great training options, and you'll see them again all up on the screen. While technology has not become known yet to find and reverse the root cause of diseases facing so many, such as dementia, many founders of tech tools are rising up to take on the challenges of longevity and make the later stages of life less unsure. Age tech is the growing category of technology solutions designed to meet the needs of the 50 plus audience and the $8.3 trillion market it represents. Age tech, which is the crossroads of longevity and technology includes products, services and experience across industries that promote longer and healthier lives, encourage people to choose how they live as they age. Examples of age tech industries include the startups now going after affordable remote monitoring, medicine adherence, social interaction, and will help millions to choose how they live as they age, and most desirably, in their own homes. So what does this have to do with you? Well, AARP estimates there's a $9 trillion economy around all of us. It's ready, willing, and moving forward with innovation every day. And healthcare is only part of the story. Financial tech, mobility and transportation, gaming, along with many other categories, are aiming to meet the demands of people 50 plus and those who support us. For example, there's a huge conference in Las Vegas in November focusing on brain health and offer startup companies an opportunity to pitch their ideas for technology that will help with that aspect of aging. While wonderful innovations are on the horizon, Keeping your brain sharp is actually just a click away today. And it's important to exercise both your body and your mind. If you do belong to AARP, they have a section called Staying Sharp, which includes online brain challenges. I was surprised as to where I needed to work more on remembering things myself. But that's the purpose of the site, to challenge your brain and to keep it sharp. There are also many apps, both free and cost-based, that you can use and add to your phone or tablet that do the same things. On the screen, you'll see the few top apps for 2022, and you can download these from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Most will have a free version or an upgraded version for a small monthly fee, and some even offer a one-time cost. A few of the highest rated are Luminosity, Elevate, NeuroNation, and Einstein's Riddle. And remember, always check the data privacy policies before downloading an app and create a strong password. And when we return, some more iPhone tips and scams. In three, two, one. Welcome to this day. Get the latest updates on what's happening in Laguna Woods Village. Watch This Day with Lisa Hart every Monday through Saturday or watch anytime on our YouTube channel, Village Television. Here's a hint for iPhone users who may not know what this screen is or what the icons mean. So I thought I'd do a short tutorial. In the upper left-hand corner of your iPhone or even your iPad, lightly pull down the menu that you see on the screen. 
There you can find your connectivity options such as airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and signal strength. If you have an audio, that will also be shown on the left side and you can control it from there. From there, you'll find the lock feature, screen mirroring, which means you can show your phone screen on your TV or vice versa. And there's also a screen brightness and sound control. At the bottom, you can have your flashlight, timer, calculator, camera, wallet, screen, and voice recording at the quick push of a button. The focus button can also be good to limit the phone options. You can set a do not disturb in general, during your exercise, your sleep, or personal focus options, such as not allowing notifications or sending automatic messages to someone that tries to reach you, letting them know that you're busy or not monitoring your phone at that time. And next month, I'm gonna cover some additional iPhone settings that you'll want to consider using. Although we've done many segments and even a whole show on senior scams, this is a recent Facebook post I saw. This is a scam. Do not click or share. There is no cute little boy. Sorry, stay away from these things. Rarely, if ever, they're factual. They're just fishing expedition. Another long-term hoax rearing its head again. If you've been a Facebook user for more than a hot minute, you already know that scams and hoaxes pop up continuously there. The post regarding Facebook's algorithm, limiting users' news feeds, photos to the same 25 friends, or control your advertising or content, are absolutely false. The supposed fix is to copy and paste the text of the hoax post onto your timeline in order to bypass the system. Unfortunately, the only thing posting that hoax on your timeline will do is to ensure that even more folks see it and post it on their timelines. Please use the sites I've mentioned before, such as Snoops and Fact Check, to verify something before you repost. Or better yet, look at it, don't repost, and just keep scrolling. And recently, a lot of people have been getting text messages like the one on the screen right now. Some are saying PayPal or your Google account is being attacked. This one from PayPal is a total scam. Do not click on the links. The gate giveaway on this is the link URL address, which is unrelated to PayPal. Delete anything like this immediately. Scams are a daily occurrence, and the best firewall you have is the human one, yourself. Taking a moment to realize it's a scam and delete the content. You be your own firewall. So we've come to the end of the October episode. It's been a pleasure to have you tune in. We love to hear from you and send your questions or comments to talktech949 at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Be sure to subscribe to Village Television YouTube channel to see our latest episode at your convenience or watch one of the many great shows produced right here, here in Laguna Woods Village, such as this day, Tales of the Woods and Discovering Laguna Woods Village with Cindy Whitney. I'm going to be a guest on her show this month, too. So remember, be kind when posting online, stay safe, and enjoy our beautiful fall weather. 